Hello. Now that we've covered the overall process of Agile, we'll get into more detail on the process of documenting requirements for the product backlog. In Agile, requirements are written in what are called epics and user stories. Let's dive in. To recap, we are following the Agile Scrum methodology and going deeper into the processes. The value unit here is working code. And this concept is in the form of a user story. The product owner, API architect, and QA engineer are busy refining these user stories. But how is a user story defined? Where does it come from? Oftentimes, an API program will start with high-level scope. These are often much easier for anyone to understand and is relatable at all levels of the organization. One or many API products which are planned to be delivered in the next launch could be listed into various scope items. For example, global rewards program. In order to make the scope buildable, we need to break down the scope into smaller pieces. The next smaller unit is called an epic, which is often thought of as a large feature. Epics help to both relate to a business need and help tie together various technical or functional groupings of small feature details for the API team to easily refer to. Epics can commonly refer to a bundle of multiple APIs or an API product. In our global rewards program API set, we might have an API product called rewards points. This, however, is not enough detail for development. Usually at this time, the product owner will have written at least a few sentences or bullets at the epic level to define it. However, in order to be buildable, we need to get into smaller requirements that can be easily chunked up and developed in a sprint. These chunks are referred to as a value unit called a user story. The user story could be one API or portions of an API. For example, just a get or post. In this example, we have a get request to retrieve the user's point balance. The user story must be clear enough for API developers to code and for QA to test. Once we have broken down scope and epics into enough user stories, we can start to assign them to upcoming sprints. It's not necessary to slice all of the scope and epics into user stories all at once. Focus on what's important first to build. One note of caution. In our experience, new teams tend not to slice their user stories into small enough units. They realize that once they begin developing, the stories are very complex. Remember, the smaller it is, the better. Also, don't forget that even during user story refinement, you can split up a user story into multiple user stories if you find out it's too big. If you need some help on how best to slice your product into smaller pieces and collaborate with your team to do this, we suggest using a technique called user story mapping. There are great step-by-step -step guides and examples. For a great starting point, go to the links provided here. Writing user stories can be tricky because it can be interpreted in many ways. A developer, QA, and product owner will have different perspective when reading just one sentence. By providing a consistent structure to user story writing, you can express your needs to mitigate more of that bias. We do this by following a structure that asks, whose shoes am I trying to walk a mile in? Whose perspective am I trying to take? What do they want to accomplish? Why do they want it? What is their motivation? What is their belief? What is their reward? If we now apply this to the user story structure, this key basic framework allows your team to ask better questions to further refine and clarify the requirements. Does the why fit? Are we over complicating? Is it testable? This draws out questions and allows a conversation to converge on a shared team understanding. For teams and product owners new to Agile, a simple entry point to writing better user stories is to focus on writing out robust acceptance criteria for each story. The initial one sentence use user story is itself too high level, and no matter how well written, will always miss those fine grained details the developer or tester needs. Sometimes called the three C's approach, 
This process of developing the acceptance criteria will depend on the product owner. The general guidance is to take the one-line user story, which is the card, and to discuss with the development team. Through conversation, questions come out about the user story to trigger the product owner to write down the conditions of satisfaction, which confirm what the user story is finished and working as intended. The process of writing the acceptance criteria can be quite a long and nested list of bullets depending on the complexity of the user story. For more people with software development experience, this part is fairly straightforward as it represents closest to detailed functional requirements. Remember to be specific in your acceptance criteria and avoid ambiguity. Write the specific error codes in an API as well as the specific conditions that trigger it. Put any specific values to be passed or returned. Specify if there are multiple conditional flows as well as the sequence. You may find that there are times when the same acceptance criteria might apply to multiple user stories. For example, a shared flow or a policy that is reused, or non-functional criteria like performance metrics. In these cases, make separate acceptance that can be linked to the user story. A more advanced form of writing acceptance criteria is using the BDD and Gherkin style of writing. This format is the given when then, GWT style of test writing. This process has the same intent and the outcome as acceptance criteria. However, with Gherkin, development teams have found this format helps avoid more missed requirements, is more developer friendly, and transferable to test automation. Tests can be written by both the product owner, the QA engineer, or developers up front. One caution, for non-technical product owners, this might be complex for advanced use cases. Let's see how this can be used. Here's an example that can be written in the given when then format. Notice that it can be written without any technical knowledge. The other great benefit of the given when then format is that it can be turned into code. This syntax can be turned into a Gherkin BDD feature file and test engineers can write test scripts that can be automated. This then perfectly streamlines the process from the high-level user story objective into a testable and automatable script. By writing a gherkin.feature file, as shown, we capture our tests in a structured but human language. Using a tool like Apically, it converts the writing directly into a test script syntax. Taking one step back, all of this elaboration work for a user story is the effort to get it ready for development. The idea is that all the dependencies a developer might have on requirements, technical solution, and the acceptance criteria is clearly laid and meets the team's definition of ready. The developer and QA engineer can focus their productive time on coding and delivering quickly and with quality. The API team defines upfront what the definition of ready is so that everybody's expectations are well aligned. As you can see on the left, getting to ready is not just the job of one person, but is a team effort. To meet the definition of ready, the API team that performs the user story refinement is typically comprised of these roles. The API product owner is responsible for selecting the user story from the backlog and elaborating the Gherkin format in detail. With many user stories in a sprint, this could be quite a workload and requires the product owner to have the time and focus on critical thinking and writing. In some teams, a dedicated API architect is assigned to flush out the API specification and draw the sequence diagrams. In other teams, the API architect is there for consultation and design guidance, while the API developers themselves perform this role. The QA engineer is responsible for preparing the test scripts and could take on the Gherkin writing from the product owner. In either case, the QA engineer is heavily reliant on both the product owner and the architect's information about the API in order to complete. This triangle of collaboration is the essence of teamwork in Agile. The three roles must work to together closely, 
often side by side in order to refine a user story. Throwing user stories over the wall and not communicating in real time will make this process really difficult. The three should peer review and challenge each other's perspectives so that the end result is really a well-defined and thought through user story. We often see API projects with quality issues and high defect rates, not because of a coding issue, but really because of a lack of quality user stories missing these three perspectives. Finally, just like the definition of ready is important, the definition of done is equally important in the team's shared view and expectations of complete. Agile teams should come together in the beginning of a project or sprint to craft or revise the definition of done so that everyone is clear on the goals. The definition of done also gives the developers and test engineers the autonomy to complete their work without any moving or variable target of success. In addition, both definitions serve as a clear balance of responsibility in the team. Strong Agile teams will gradually change both definitions over time and even after a sprint based on lessons learned. I hope this course has helped you get a clear grasp translating business scope to user stories. If you want more information, please check out the community for ebooks, articles, and other related topics. Thank you for watching.